is Indiana and Maryland. Don't look now, but the Hoosiers beginning to put some things together. They've gotten a little healthier. They are a two and a half point underdog at College Park here against the Terps. Total is 138 and a half. Uh, Matty Cox, you're going to have the official play. So I am right back to you for what you like in Indiana and Maryland. Yeah, put my bias aside here, or, or so I'm trying to, but uh, I, I think Indiana rolls here. I, I do. I think it's a great matchup for the Hoosiers. We, we look at what they've done recently in this kind of resurgence of their season. Uh, it was, you know, it was spurred in large part by the injury to Race Thompson, who's been back recently. But when he went down, I think it forced them to tinker with some different lineups, uh, really uh, shining a light on their uh, younger, more athletic wings, Jordan Geronimo. Pops, um, we saw or Mr. Galloway step up and make some plays. I just think the lineups really started to come together. Uh, at least it started to come together when he was out. Now Thompson comes back in, and they look really good with him. I think there's just a deeper, more confident rotation that Indiana has to work with. Um, and there's been some lineup rotational and schematic adjustments that Woodson and that staff has made. Uh, we always, we never doubted, I guess, the talent and depth of this Indiana team. Now we're starting to see the best version of it. Maryland's in a great spot here, right? And they're a team you have to respect at home. Um, but I think because of the way Indiana has shown success with smaller lineups, um, especially before Thompson came back, that will come in handy against Maryland, who I think preys on creating that five-out type of mismatch. Um, you know, that was kind of their secret sauce last year, and they've been really good with that this season too. So this version of Indiana um, gives me confidence that they can match up with, with Maryland. And I think the home court, while you have to respect it, um, I think it's overbaked in this number. I'm looking to take two, three, uh, with the Hoosiers, potentially money line if it comes down any farther. Trace uh, Jackson Davis at this point, 20 points per game. Again, here we go back to your best players have to be your best players. And um, give a uh, look, give Indiana credit. Um, he had he had a 2020 game, 25 and 21 rebounds to help them in the Minnesota game two games ago. Corby Craig. Five-game win streak by Indiana, four of them by margin. They beat Wisconsin by 18. They beat Illinois by 15. They beat Michigan State by 13 at home. Then they had the close game with Minnesota. Now they've beaten Ohio State this past weekend by 16. So that's four games where they've won by at least double figures. Any thoughts on Indiana as the road team here at Maryland? Yeah, Indiana's been a weird situation. They they lost to Iowa after being up like 2025. Uh, it seemed like a coaching blunder. Then there was like social media aspects where they were complaining about people complaining to them. It, it's been a weird situation. And then all of that said, they cleaned it up really quick. They look like a really good basketball team. They have the talent pool. They have the depth. Uh, going back to the pickup game, I think that there's not many teams that would match up well versus Indiana in most cases. This Maryland team is one of them, though. Uh, the, as Matt said, this is going to be a pretty even matchup, player versus player. I think they play a very similar schematic um, and, and I'm really not worried about Indiana on it on an away court. They have played decently bad on the road recently, but uh, they don't shoot the three ball much at all. They're pretty efficient when they do, but they're 19th in the nation in two point percent, like scoring from two. So I'm not too worried about their their blunders offensively. They they should be plenty fine. Uh, this could be a really good basketball game. It wouldn't surprise me if this stays within four either way and comes down to the last second if you're going to get a cover or not. Maryland again favored by three. Uh, Jameer Young led them in their win over Nebraska with 18 the last time out. Young is their leading scorer. They get Indiana at home. ESPN2 will have it at 9 Eastern time tonight. Maryland's won three of their last four, including being Wisconsin and Nebraska at home prior to this game with Indiana. Matty Cox says, though, that he likes the Hoosiers. There's a lot of agreement with you for what it's worth in the live chat. We see some of the comments uh, coming up here, the only other one thing we see that uh, that Maddie's taking the points, taking the Hoosiers. Is it a look ahead spot for the matchup with Purdue, the traditional hardcore rival of Indiana in the same state in West Lafayette? Any concern about that, Maddie? I guess to you first. You're not concerned. You're officially playing Indiana, but what about a look ahead? It's a fair concern. I remember last year, end of the season, uh, IU was in a similar sandwich spot against Rutgers at home. Uh, it's a team they should have put away at home, and they lost by three. And then they went to Purdue. Uh, and played very well, lost by two. So, yeah, I, there's a precedent just last season of how you kind of lay an egg. But I think just how hot this team is, how well this team's playing with the recent kind of lineup tweaks and schematic adjustments, I think it kind of neg negates that concern for me. So I threw that out the window when I made this handicap. 
All right, Corby Craig, any quick thought on that, on the look ahead to Purdue, or you want to move on to Q&A? If you're talking like a Minnesota, not a Maryland, maybe, but this team is locked in for Maryland. Maryland's a very good basketball team. They're what on the season? They're 14 and seven. So uh, no look ahead. This is a really good team that they're going into their house and they're going to have to play basketball again. So they will be very focused on the the task at hand, in my opinion. 